So with the higher frequencies coming into the planet, metaphorically represented brighter sun, basically the truth is leaking out everywhere. <laughs> the whole business of deceit is becoming impossible in the higher frequency band that the planet is moving into. And so all of the dysfunction, all the deceit, all the misbehavior is now showing up. So what's happening on 3D Earth? There's a progressive polarization as people increasingly choose positive polarization, selflessness and service to others, love of all, or a negative polarization, service to self only, and love of self only, selfishness. There's a metaphor that you can imagine in which there are two train tracks leading down, one to the higher frequency version of Earth and the other staying with the lower frequency 3D reality. At this point, those train tracks, so to speak, the choices that people have made and the decisions that they've made and the actions they're taking put them on two different trains at this point and switching trains, so to speak, is no longer possible. The gap is becoming too wide between those headed to stay with the planet's higher frequency and those whose actions are causing them to remain in the third density. On 3D Earth, the continued 3D drama is occurring while more of the planet is shifting to fourth density. The polar ice caps are melting in this time. As we're moving into this new frequency band, it will be perceived as higher energy, higher temperatures, and the data is showing clearly that on the planet as it exists right now, the polar ice caps are definitely melting. The data, scientific data is showing that clearly. We're seeing data that's showing very clearly an increasing occurrence in the third dimensional Earth experience of uh, disasters and economic damage is shown on the chart here, progressively increasing over time. Right now, the entire solar system is experiencing, so to speak, global warming and planetary changes. So this is not simply about man's misbehavior and continuing with fossil fuels and the greenhouse effect on the earth. That is an effect, but it's a second order effect compared with what's actually happening here. The whole solar system is moving into this higher frequency band and is being reprogrammed and exhibiting more energy. The observations in the solar system are inconsistent with explanations based on solar radiance. This is about information projecting and causing changes in the planets themselves as opposed to simply the sun getting hotter and radiating more heat. Uh, changes, for example, of the atmospheric pressure tripling on Pluto and experiences from some of the planets uh, putting on more x-rays now. When you look at the exclamation of simply solar radiance as being the only source of energy to accomplish this, that doesn't explain the degree of the changes. It would be impossible based on solar radiance alone, based upon the radiation that we know is coming from the sun, physical radiation, to create those effects. The effects are planetary changes that represent information fields causing changes on the planets themselves. The Earth itself is a living system, as I say, ascending to a greater frequency and a greater level of harmony. That's actually happened, and not just happening, it's happened. The Earth is right now a fourth density enterprise. It's just that there still are third dimensional experiences remaining as a tail as it continues to move into this area of space time more and more. To remain on the planet as it continues to manifest more and more of its fourth density behavior, we have to do the same thing. We have to raise our frequency, the frequency band that we're operating in. And that means that things which cause us to act, make decisions around our life and behavior that are lower frequency decisions basically will cause us to 
lose the battle in remaining in the frequency band as we get higher and higher. And when I say lose the battle, that doesn't mean that you get destroyed. That just means you stay with the third dimensional experience. You're choosing the third dimensional experience if you aren't making the choices that in fact reflect gaining more wisdom and expression of love. Those are the two elements that enable human ascension. It's basically a matter of raising your frequency and it consists of both acquiring higher wisdom and more and more expression of love. And without both, you won't get into the frequency band that's necessary for the fourth density. There are actually two types of ascension that are possible. One is the so-called spiritual ascension, where you develop the wisdom necessary for your frequency and you develop the capacity to love and the expression of love high enough that the combination allows you to perceive and operate in the fourth density. But you do so by leaving the body behind in one form or another and basically as a spiritual being moving into the fourth density and acquiring a body by being born into the fourth density and having that experience at that point or becoming a walk-in by agreement with another soul that provides you with a fourth density body, either partially sharing a body or providing it to you solely by their leaving. There's another type of ascension which is more difficult to achieve, which is a so-called physical ascension in which you raise the frequency of your physical body in this time to a high enough level that that body actually can operate in the higher frequency band. That's more difficult to do, but there are different implications between the two. If you ascend spiritually into the fourth density, that does not allow you to move back and forth between the fourth and the third at will. If you, in fact, ascend physically, you actually can move back and forth and retain your memory and awareness and expanded abilities in the lower densities. And so those are the two possibilities. Very few people on the planet will uh, achieve a physical ascension. Most of, of them are not headed toward doing that. Basically, you have to perfect the body to a great enough level that its frequency is highest then. And most people really aren't doing that. So what's happening generally on the planet at this point? There's a spiritual awakening happening, as I've said. There is also occurring a certain amount of protection and intervention from higher dimensional levels. That is, there are higher dimensional beings in all of the dimensions of this universe, and there are higher dimensional beings whose function is to monitor what's happening here, and in some cases to intervene when the interests of the collective consciousness that are experiencing this training ground are best served by an intervention. Those kind of interventions usually are as much as possible not visible to the participants here. They try not to have it be visible, but that doesn't mean it isn't happening. For example, in this particular time, it will not be uh, permitted for the planet to go into a third world war and nuclear destruction because it does not serve the interests of the collective consciousness that's participating here and very few of that collective consciousness want to see that happen. Some of the few who have been trying to control the many have actually been trying to provoke that kind of thing to happen, but it will not be allowed to happen. There is technology in the higher dimensions by which nuclear weapons can be uh, neutralized. They're basically transmuted uh, into other elements that are not radioactive. That kind of thing can be done with information technology if you have the knowledge to do it, uh, if that kind of thing is warranted. And those judgments are made in higher dimensions in considering the interests of the collective consciousness here. Other types of interventions that happen from time to time are things like intervention that prevents certain kinds of messing around physics-wise from creating catastrophe. Things like the big particle colliders, which are generally being justified on the basis of 
developing more and more basic understanding of how things work. Those types of experimentations actually potentially risk the collapse of this reality and therefore there are at times in some of those types of endeavors interventions that prevent that kind of thing from happening, that prevent the collapse and they may produce results which cause people to think that they've achieved what it is that they were hoping for and finding the God particle or whatever, but actually that isn't really what's happening. The quest for the God particle, I would submit, is uh, somewhat wrong-headed. But there are interventions that prevent the destruction of the training environment to the detriment of the collective consciousness, other than occasions like the destruction of Maldek, which served a purpose once in the solar system. So, then those interventions, as I say, come from higher dimensional levels, typically from beyond the galaxy. We have arrived now at a tipping point where the amount of darkness on the planet is exceeded by the amount of light or enlightenment on the planet. That is, we are no longer descending into darkness on this planet. We almost descended into complete darkness and, in fact, there has been a lot of higher dimensional interest in what's going on here because it has been extremely rare to ever find a planet go this far into the darkness where the few control the many almost completely and then recover from it. But now actually the tipping point has arrived where the efforts of approximately 800,000 light workers who actually incarnated here from higher dimensions and took the risk of being stuck here for a considerable time is actually taking shape and taking effect finally at a level at which there's a tipping point of now people waking up and things starting to shift toward more and more light on the planet. So that's actually the good news. And that tipping point occurred about the winter solstice of 2016. Since that time, the light workers who were for many, many centuries finding themselves increasingly marginalized with regard to resources and uh, opposition occurring now are beginning to find themselves empowered by the changing frequencies on the planet and the tipping point. The fourth density and fifth density ascensions, as I mentioned before, involve polarity consciousness. Uh, the Earth itself is ascending, and it's ascending into positively polarized space-time because of the predominant uh, will of the collective consciousness. That portion that will make this ascension in this time frame from this training ground have chose selflessness and service to others rather than selfishness and control of others. So this will be a positively polarized planet. It is now a positively polarized fourth density planet. And eventually, as this process concludes, the only consciousnesses which will be on this planet, those who ascend and are able to operate here, will be positively polarized themselves. The fourth density human Earth experience now in positively polarized space-time is that our DNA is changing, our body crystallizations are changing, our chemistry is changing, as I mentioned before. There is an increase in luminosity that's occurring uh, in the physicality that's manifest in the fourth density. Uh, so things will appear to be slightly lit from within and they will have less materiality associated with them, less substance in a degree versus the third dimensional experience. Also, the fourth density human experience is a non-linear experience where you can't simply use linear thinking and plot a course and end up with what it is you want. Things are operating synchronistically and much more complexly uh, to yield uh, the results that we seek. And so Basically, the most effective thing we can do is define what it is we want, what we're trying to create, and attempt to move in that direction, but not necessarily have a plan for how it is we're going to achieve that, because the universe will provide the plan as long as you don't get in the way of it. If you define it linearly, chances are in the fourth density, it's not going to happen. If things don't happen that way, generally they're nonlinear. 
we're starting to see and experience more and more nonlinearity. It's starting to be more apparent. Synchronicity is also occurring where things are happening via seemingly coincidence and synchronicity and marvelous complex workings, whereas in fact that's the way this operating system works in the fourth density. The translation of thought to effect in the fourth density is also more rapid. The distance time-wise between thinking a thought and manifesting it in the third density can be relatively slow and one doesn't necessarily get a lot of reinforcement from that cause and effect relationship so that you can easily understand that that's what's happening, but it is. And in fact, in the fourth density, the translation is much faster. As a result, it becomes more and more apparent that that's what's happening. What's out there is not simply acting upon us. We are in fact acting upon it collectively and individually to create and experience what it is we are trying to create. Reincarnation is still a phenomenon that is present in the fourth density and the experiences of karma and the so-called law of confusion where still you're required to develop more and more discernment and nobody will give you all of the answers from a single source. Those are fourth density characteristics as well as third. The fifth density human experience in positively polarized space time is similar to the fourth with regard to all of the things that I mentioned, except that the translation of thought to effect is even more rapid and there's even more synchronicity and more nonlinearity to the operating system. So fundamentally, uh, the rising consciousness of humanity is occurring as a result of the effort of the light workers that have come here as a result of technologies that have been created, uh, in many cases by light workers here, the educational efforts of those light workers to educate people as to the cause and effect and also as to what's happening here, the healing techniques in which it's being shown that people have the capacity within themselves to heal and to assist others in healing and the proactivism of the 800,000 light workers to create change is having an effect. There is something else going on to assist the rising consciousness of humanity and that's something called soul integration in which individuals are starting to become aware of the distortions that they picked up from their past experiences in this life and former lives, generally speaking former past lives in which we didn't resolve things tend to show up again in this lifetime as patterns and people are learning that they need to deal with those things since all disease and dysfunction basically stems from distortions of identity which represent experiences of trapped emotions and negative programming that is controlling their behavior from a psychological point of view. So people are learning to deal with those things and they're learning how to clear them and in the process of doing that they essentially reintegrate elements and fragments of their soul that have become tied to and dysfunctional from their total consciousness by virtue of the past things that haven't been dealt with. Uh, there are also repopulation protocols uh, which are already having a significant effect on the planet and will have even more so in which the small children coming into the planet are in a higher frequency band because the planet will support that. They could not have come to the earth previously in many of those cases because their frequency was too high for the frequency band of the third dimensional Earth. It's becoming apparent that they're quite phenomenal. You see a lot of uh, child prodigies now. You see a lot of nonlinear learning characteristics in, in children now. Greater harmony from them. Greater capacities in them. All of the ones that are being allowed to come in right now fit into the fourth density frequency band. So they will have no problem with the transition. There are other repopulation protocols as well such as there are many walk-ins now of higher frequency individuals, higher frequency soul segments that are 
coming into the lower frequency population where there are walk-ins agreed to. Many of them are their own higher selves coming in that will take people who were in positions of authority and influence and suddenly have them behaving differently, making different, more positive decisions and able to operate in the higher frequency band. That's one of the other protocols occurring in this time. There's something called the rubber band effect occurring on Earth that is producing considerable fascination from higher dimensional beings that are watching what's going on here. And there is a great deal of interest by higher dimensions in the Earth's transition in this time because we have extended so far into negativism and the control of the few over the many and darkness. They've never seen a descent into darkness so far before it turned around and came back into the light. The effect of the so-called rubber band effect is like a slingshot where somebody pulls it back farther and farther and farther and farther and when they let go it shoots farther and faster. And that's essentially the analogy that by going farther and farther into blackness and now turning around and coming into the light, it will actually evolve faster and farther than anything that's been seen before. And uh, that is the expectation based upon what's happening here now. So it's an extremely unusual situation. There is what appears to be a lot of chaos and craziness on the planet at this time. It is not chaos and craziness. It is the old dissolving the lower frequency systems and control dissolving and being replaced by the higher frequency system and the prevailing of a new order. An order that is greater in harmony, fairer, higher frequency, more loving on the planet. There are what appear to be miracles occurring on the planet. They're not miracles, they're just higher frequency phenomena that are actually possible in the higher frequency operating system. There are also being witnessed synchronicities, happiness in elements that are now finally occurring, and the meek are inheriting the earth. What's not needed in this time is concern. You really don't have to be concerned about anything. You don't have to be judging by appearances. That's not necessary, not important to do. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's important not to do that because everything is in transition. It's not necessary to focus on the 3D drama at this point. If you're on the path, and you wouldn't be listening to this video if you weren't on the path to ascend into the fourth density, it's not necessary to focus on the 3D drama. It's fine to be aware of it, but that actually isn't your reality and not the reality that you're here to create. Any type of struggling is not necessary. As a matter of fact, it's completely counterproductive. You don't need to struggle. What you do need to do is to focus on creating what it is you want. You need to navigate by inner knowing and resonance. How do things make you feel? If they make you feel good, trust it because chances are that's the truth. That's how we are able to tell with our hearts what the truth is, is it resonates with us. And when it does, it makes us happy. We need to continue our efforts to soul integration and our spiritual progress because the planetary frequency is still rising right now and we need to stay with it. We need to focus on what we most want in our lives and move in that direction. Even if we're only able to move one step in that direction, that's significant. The universe will pave the path under our feet by our actions when we move toward what it is we truly want in our hearts. Just daydreaming and not moving in any direction actually doesn't create any effect. But moving in a direction causes you to see it manifest in your experience. So listen for guidance. Focus on what you most want in your life. Listen for guidance as to how to achieve it. That guidance will come to you either externally or internally if you listen and pay attention and follow your heart. Maintain balance, maintain harmony, and maintain a connection with nature, which is very important to causing you to stay grounded in the rising frequency that's occurring on the planet. 
What will happen? What will happen very shortly is actually the separation of the 3D and 4D realities. They are starting to pull apart. They will pull apart shortly. As they pull apart, as that time approaches, and that time is not far off, in my perception, it's in months, not years, before that will happen with third density and fourth density realities will separate. As that is about to occur, you will start to gain some initial perceptions of the astral realm, which is in fact the fourth density. When people pass on, for example, from the third density, they actually in a discarnate form occupy the lower two frequency bands of the fourth density band. That is the fourth density band has within it 12 different bands of frequencies and the lower two frequencies are typically occupied by those who've actually passed on and moved into a discarnate state from the third density. So you may well be able to perceive those who passed on in a discarnate state at that point and you will know that you're actually in the fourth density realm, the bottom couple of layers of it. As you continue to progress, you'll move into the more central and higher layers uh, in which those who have passed on actually can't get to those layers without having ascended. They just uh, bide their time, so to speak, in that aspect of their consciousness uh, remaining available in the lower tiers of the fourth density for as long as that's useful to others that are here. Meanwhile, they have other layers of their consciousness that can reincarnate and uh, move back into the third density when they're ready, if they choose. What will happen at the point at which the reality separate is a solar flash. That solar flash will create basically a trifurcation of the population. The population that's on the earth at that point, part of it will remain on the earth in on the fourth density earth when that solar flash happens. And the solar flash will be actually the separation of the two realities. Uh, when that flash occurs, part of the population will remain that have successfully moved into the fourth density consciousness band that allows them to perceive and operate in the fourth density. The ones that will remain on the planet will be the positively polarized fourth density ascendees. Negatively polarized fourth density ascendees will ascend to a different location other than this planet Earth, which is in positively polarized space time. There will be a version that's in negatively polarized space time that they can ascend to. That won't be the Earth at that point. It may be very Earth like, but negatively polarized. And the remaining population, which will be the majority in all likelihood of the planetary population that is still in third density at the time of the separation of the realities, will in fact undergo a transfer to a very Earth like environment that most of them will believe actually is the earth and they will continue their third density incarnation, their third dimensional incarnation in that other earth-like venue that isn't the earth but looks for all intents and purposes like it is. That may seem very hard to believe but you need to remember that these are constructs. They are constructs that in fact in all of their complexity can be reproduced anytime, anywhere by the program that comes from the source through the roots that I've described. So there are actually numerous Earth-like environments out there. There is actually a universe in a certain sense for every consciousness that's here, meaning that each one is experiencing a slightly different experience in the more general universe that we defined by this particular operating system and the galaxies and all of that. But the differences from one layer to another that individuals are experiencing are modest variations that most don't really appreciate are different. After this separation of realities, third and fourth density, there will be more and more harmony manifesting as the Earth continues to move higher and higher into the fourth density information field that's being projected now. 
in this area of space-time as we're moving into that radial band that's being projected from the galactic solar center. Another thing which will be happening as a result of this separation and transformation is that there will be a long-term protection of this solar system that prevents intervention from outside the solar system with regard to things like control and genetic experimentation and all of that kind of thing. There is essentially a band of protection that will be enforced by higher dimensions that serve this kind of situation and protect against those incursions and allow the indigenous population of the solar system to evolve by itself for the next thousand years. And that'll be basically a thousand years from 2050. So that will be sustained and we will not have other groups coming in, intervening, interfering, and attempting to control what's happening here from the outside. After a thousand years, that kind of thing will be permitted, but by the end of a thousand years, given the rubber band effect, we may well be way above the level at which anybody is trying to control anything. We'll see. It's an interesting opportunity for us. At this point, our sole purpose, S-O-U-L and S-O-L-E, in task is now to create a heaven on earth. That is, whatever we individually desire and see is the ideal heaven on earth. It's our job to create that, meaning we're to focus and move in the direction of creating that and manifest that. That's what the job is now. We can now relax and enjoy the journey. We don't need to do anything that isn't joyful at this point in this higher frequency band. And the journey is the goal, so enjoy the journey. There will be perspectives on additional topics that will be forthcoming. They'll appear on my website, marknewkirk.com. It's been a joy for me to share this information with you today, and I hope you found it useful.